Okay, so the DV drive is quiet and down and nothing still happens. So I'm going to hit browse. Then I'll click on my DES Rock support CD. So I guess it is a CD. No drivers were found. Make sure that your installation media contains the correct drivers and then click OK. Alright. It lets you click there, so it shouldn't matter. You shouldn't have to go into certain folders, but I'll go into AMD64 because that's what I have. No drivers are found. Okay, I'm going to unhide that. Because uh, what did I, what I, you know, I saw that by accidentally booting that. I saw that it looks like it only has XP drivers. No drivers are found. So, uh, oh, there's one other thing I could try. Where is it? Local disk C. Ek, boot X. Let's see. Huh. That must be a live drive. Okay, there's that. That is my original Windows system. What about my um, SD card that I'm booting from? Doesn't see it. That's where I do have... Uh, <coughs> I'm gonna go into downloads and see. I really, really probably not a good idea, but I'm gonna go into downloads. And if I have my, what I was thinking was I could uh, Broadcom wireless driver for the. No, that's the Dell laptop. What I want is the. There's my phone backups that I keep talking about. What I want is the uh, the Nick. I think maybe. Now I guess the only drivers I had to. It was a Lino, uh, my Dell 1525 laptop, and uh, and the Lenovo i5 that I had to manu I had to manually install the drivers on. Yeah, so I don't. I, that's not going to be on there after all. I guess it might be in the Windows folder, but since this thing's been so infected, I wouldn't do that if they were there anyway really wouldn't want to do it out of the downloads folder what would be the difference you know if it's infected it's infected but I don't I was just thinking that might trick it into going ahead and running but uh, nothing to do unclick that and hit rescan it won't do it and the uh, this is not the error that that warning said I was going to have was it I didn't make any uh, easy to boot helper disk, but that this is uh, talking about drivers for your hardware. And uh, maybe I misinterpreted that message, and this this is my problem. What what that little red warning said. Um, let me see. Started to say I'll put that uh, DVD for installing Windows in there, but that's not a driver. Yeah, that's not a driver DVD, so that wouldn't matter. Okay. So, um, what I do when, I, when you want to quit, if you decide to quit, is hit, click the X, and that'll say, do you really want to quit it? Yes, and then, uh, of course, you could just hard shut down, but you can do that again if you want, and I believe it'll shut you down. Yeah. I wanted to get that out of that DVD, CD out of there. Get out of there before it's too late. Okay. <coughs> Maybe it was... Uh, I'm going to go one more reboot and just see what that message says. See if it makes sense. And then I think I'm going to quit fooling with it. Because I really don't think I want to put 32-bit windows back on here again. Uh, I think I might actually end up liking it better. As far as backing up my phone files and all that, I think I might r like doing that better from Fedora. Because now I can run my phone explorer from my XP virtual machine in my Fedora 23 machine here, my quad core. So I don't actually n have to have a, a separate hardware machine just to run my... That was one of the, kind of the main reason I wanted... There was one of the main reasons I wanted... Uh, Windows back on this box is because it was the one I'd been using my phone explorer on but I was having to connect to it through BNC so it made it slower you know refresh rate you know, going through the net uh, 
went through that machine and then through the network to the machine I was on. So, of course, it would have been okay if I, you know, if I was able to leave the uh, VGA and, and USB plugged into this machine all the time, then it'd be all, it'd be uh, fine. But I can't, so not the way I have everything have everything set up. Or I don't want to do that. There's other machines I'd rather leave plugged in. So, yeah, let's go to 64 again. I want to see what that message says. Easy to boot XML, full language, load ISO, no prompts, sample XML. I wonder what sample XML is. And I don't want auto wipe, that's for sure. Okay, since I got that error, well, I want to see what that error is, though. I'm going to read it again, so hit the O. Okay, using that ISO and the easy to boot XML. To install Windows from a USB hard disk, you also need a need to be helper USB flash drive. If you do not have one, you will get a DVD drive device. Driver is missing. Oh, that is exactly what I got. Please read the easy to boot tutorial for more details. Press enter to return. Oh, okay, that took me back to my... Alright, <coughs> so that's my problem. I used to figure out my problem, X64. Now what's the sample XML? Would that make it work? Sometimes there's more than one option uh, when you're reading on their website. Same problem. Hmm. Enter to return. I thought I had got uh, had wasn't going to have to ever do that because of the way I set it up at 32. Uh, the the easy to be drive the uh, SD card. So I wonder if that will end up happening on all of them then. I'm gonna do the 64. I mean the 32 bit just to see. Yep, gets the same same error message. Okay, uh, I could go try and make that and do all that stuff, but would it be worth the trouble? Let's see, I want to go back to the main menu. Let's see how well Fedora, see if it looks like it would uh, run well and install. Fedora Life Security, Fedora Make Configs, yeah, x86-64, that's what I would want on there. And I could use that ISO ask, but I don't think I need to. I remember it ran last time. Troubleshooting test the media boot fedora. I think it started on test the media, so you gotta. They have the weirdest way of highlighting that stuff. It can't tell what's highlighted. I just have to move my keys up and down until I know I'm at the top. <coughs> this boots pretty quickly. <coughs> <coughs> But I'll have to call. Okay, so um, rest my hand a little bit, change hands. I believe it boots pretty well. I can go, I have to go get on my other machine and read up on what can that. I mean, I've got those uh, two little SD cards. I mean, USB sticks over there. I could make that helper on there, but kind of not so much in the mood to do that. Yeah, everything looks good. The whole desktop's there. I think one time I booted into it on something and like this, I thought, and it wasn't there. Yeah, I think I got in here and tried to install uh, Clam AV that time. So it should work. What I'm wondering about, though, is uh, I'm going to click on install the hard drive and let's just make sure it's not going to give me errors or anything running it this way. But uh, it looks like it's going to install. Well, I guess I could just do it. I don't know. Okay. There's the English language. Continue. Looks like this would run. I mean, it didn't didn't act up. Sometimes though, when the installers don't work, it's way on down the line before you find out. 
no installation destination what you have to select these different things and set them up and of course I would go in here and I would select the 28 gigabyte uh, which is empty now and then this would be the one I'd want to leave alone the uh, one that has the Windows 7 on it that was full of viruses it's kind of slow to uh, oh and you down here you, I, I didn't mention any of that but and it doesn't right away say this is see this is checking configuration now it's okay and uh, actually if you want to make a host name you should make a host name for every machine if you have more than one machine because uh, they'll conflict with each other if they're all named uh, local host so uh, America Chicago time zone that would be right okay I'm going to do it right now, but it looks like it would work. There's one thing you'd probably want to do. Uh, on a 30 gig hard drive, it's not very big, and, it, and Fedora automatically divides you up into root part. You'll have a boot partition of about, uh, just a, just for grub and stuff, about 500 megabytes, no big deal. You want, you got to have that. And then it'll, but it'll make a root and a home partition, and it'll like make a pretty big root partition. And then and you'll get to use it in your system. Next thing you know, you, one of them's full. You know, depends on how big, how, how you let it do it. But so you might have to customize the partitioning. And uh, it's easy to do it in the vein. You just say, divide it up or don't divide it up. But in, in Fedora, you got to go in there and set this and set that. Uh, but you can do it. I, that's probably where I would have needed to do it. I would have said, uh, yeah, automatically configure partitioning. I will configure. Uh, I would like to make additional space available. You'd do that if you already had uh, stuff on the drive and you wanted it to be either erased or like resized or any of that. You can have it encrypt your data if you want. But uh, so I would have to say uh, I will configure and it can get a little hard. But uh, you got to create a mount point. You, it, it t I th I've done it. See there, uh, 28, total space 28. One storage device to select it. Okay, when you create your mount points before the point of station, you'll be able to view their details here. Oh, and you can create them automatically. LVM, so you could do LVM, BTRFS, standard. Uh, or LVM thin provisioning, which is that's a thin client like you know remote, uh, like a Pixie boot, like a network boot. So you don't want that unless you're making a network boot setup. Uh, but uh, so that's your two choices now. Well, three standard. I guess I would give you could do AXD4. LVMs are great because you can resize them. I've never actually done it because I'm always scared I'm going to still lose something, but you're supposed to be able to resize them with easily without losing any data. But um, I'm going to click that. See, it's not doing anything yet. So, uh, yeah, so then you got boot SDA 500 megabyte. Root is 25 <laughs> gigabyte. Swap is 2.86. Oh, well, where's my home partition? Maybe it wants to use the other hard drive for home or something. I don't know. This hard drive is barely big. I didn't think about that. It's hardly barely big enough for a real real Fedora system. But you got to have a home partition. Um. Will not happen to you. Uh, click on them. the begin button which would be you have to hit done and then click on the begin and all that stuff but uh, in here you can modify the sizes of the different partitions but uh, hmm. I'm gonna hit done see if it's gonna go back and I don't know if I got it or not there we go Let's see. Destroy partition table on the MS DOS. Oh, you gotta make sure you know. See, it's just telling you that 
Mac store. Okay, yeah, Mac store. Ma if you both of your hard drives are the same brand, then you really gotta pay attention. If you need a swap, for sure. Well, that's fine. Destroy the partition table. It'll it'll uh, write a new one on there. So you create one. It's still gonna be an MS DOS partition table, but it needs to do that to make it boot and everything. SDB one. SDB SDA one. And then SDXT four. SDA two. I think it's going to make all the home partition as well. It just wasn't showing it. I'm going to hit cancel because I don't want to do anything to it for sure right now. I'm going to go see about that helper deal. You sure you want to quit? Yes, I want to quit. Okay, but I just wanted to get in there and see. I'm going to shut this down. And I'll go see about that helper. I don't know if I really want to fool around with that either. Alright, shut down. Alright, I'll come back later.